if you guess the name of this band, I'm gonna give you something for free. Guys, I have a special guest on today's video here. This is my good friend, Drew. What's up, man? What's happening, Jason? We are gonna show you the most awesome studio for filming a show, a podcast, and this really could even be a recording studio easily, man. But uh, some of you know I was on Drew's podcast, The Drinking with Drew Show, on yep. YouTube, you're on Spotify, and, and all I those heart, places. Apple Podcast, and then obviously live on YouTube, yeah. and you name it, we're there. And after being in the studio, after filming the show, I, I'm like, I've got to film this. I've got to get this and show my audience. So, guys, we are going to take you around Drew's studio here. Uh, stay tuned till the end because we've got a special treat for you, as always. Come on, let's do it. Let's start with some of the electronics over here. So, for mixers, I use the Zoom L8. I love this mixer. Obviously, you can take it with you. You can record live shows. I keep it in the studio. Um, it has a lot of tricks built into it. Um, it has some samplings. You can add your own samples. So if you want something on your show or in your mix that you just want to pre-record and you can press the button, it'll play it automatically. So there's a lot to this. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Just YouTube, the Zoom L8, it's a great product. So for software, I use OBS. Just for a beginner's sake, I'm not a master. I'm a beginner, I've only been doing this for less than a year. OBS was a very fast and, and just down to earth, easy, simple tool to use. So my recording and, and just bringing in my audio, my video, it's got the capture device, audio interface, all that good stuff will go right into OBS. There's tons that you can do with OBS. I don't use nearly as much as is available. There's plugins that you can use and buy and all this stuff. I'm using the simple version right now, and again, I'm still learning um, tons of stuff to, to do with it. If you're shooting video, this is a must. And I learned that the hard way. I did, I did photography for 18 years. Getting into this video live stream, you're not only live streaming, you're downloading that video after you're done with the live stream so you can edit it and do things with it later. So you chew up so much memory when you're shooting live and you're downloading video. Your, your, your hard drive just gets filled up this is a 20 terabyte hard drive. And honestly, it was recommended that I could go higher, but for now, you know, 20 terabyte I think is gonna do the trick. Now, if you come over here, Jason, and down here I have some DBX 286S's. And these are, they're processors, they're mic microphone processors, voice processors. Um, and I actually just ordered three more and I ordered Behringer's version, which is the Ultra Voice UV1. And they are cheaper than the DBXs, and honestly, they do more, and they have some more um, benefits to them. But a lot of your pro um, voiceover artists use these processors. You can tweak them in a lot of different ways. You can obviously take out the ambient sound of a room. You have a de -er in there, so if you're talking and, and you notice a lot of the S's in your talking, it can tone that down. Obviously it has the basic EQs in it. Check those out. YouTube's your friend, the DBX and the Behringer's, um, the voice processing systems. They're awesome. And I'm still learning those as well. As far as voice and if you're doing any audio in your studio, I think those are a must for clean professional audio. The microphone that I use is a PR40. It was recommended to me from Mike Calta, who is a radio host here in Tampa. He's very well known. He's been on the air for over 15 years. And this is a, a studio quality, like AM, FM, talk radio style microphone. They use these microphones on the air all over the place. Well, one second, dude. What, yeah. what about this cool helmet over here, Oh, well, here, this man? is Boba Fett, obviously, <laughs> but it's my version of Boba Fett. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of a black and white fan, so I kind of theme everything off black and white. I had it custom painted black and white, so... You know, it's, uh, no, it's an authentic helmet. It's got, uh, you know, all the cushion there. And it's my, uh, it, it stares at me during the show in case I fuck up. It kind of <laughs> lets me know that I'm being watched. So for microphones, I talked about the PR40, but depending on who's in your studio, um, you want a variety of microphones in my opinion. 
for somebody like Jason, the Shure 7MB is the perfect microphone. Yeah. He's got that deep voice. It's going to capture that and put him uh, on, on air the way he should sound. For my co-host, Laura, she's female. I have a different microphone for her because her voice is higher. It's crisp. The audio tech works well for her voice. And I thought all the mics sounded great when we did the podcast uh, last time. So, and those uh, those sure microphones, those SM7Bs, yeah. those are good death metal microphones, by the way. So. They are. They love that that deep that growl, you know, growl. And yeah, it's awesome. Cloud lifters. Yeah. As awesome as that sure microphone is, I have a cloud lifter on each one, as well as bringing it through the sound processor, the mic processor. So. This is basically, it's a gain uh, magnifier, a booster gain. Uh, I highly recommend them. You can watch some YouTube videos on pros and cons of cloud lifters. I watch probably a hundred and the majority of the experts using them, you know, they sounded awesome and they recommend them. And that's for dynamic microphones. Condenser microphones, you cannot use a cloud lifter. The AudioTech condenser microphone, you cannot use a cloud lifter with that. You can use the processor though, that has the gain enhancer within the process. All right, so for cameras, I have a variety of different cameras. The most important thing that you want with a camera, 1080p, 4K is honestly, it's not that important right now. Most of the people watching your video, they're not gonna be watching it in 4K. I do 1080, sometimes when you download it, you can have the option to download it at a lower, um, you know, seven, what, 720, I yeah, think. So, but it really depends on what you wanna do. So I have my camera here. It's more of the expensive camera, just because it's the main camera. And then we have the side cameras. I use tripods for the most part, just because you want a nice steady shot. Um, you don't want your camera shaking around, unless it's Joe Cam. So <laughs> we have a camera over here we call Joe Cam. And this camera, it'll come off the tripod. And um, one of our co-hosts, Joe, um, he'll take this and he'll do like a hand uh, free movement and just for that specific effect um, and he'll do crazy zoom ins and zoom outs um, just so we have that we call it Joe Cam um, and then we have over here a separate camera on the um, table on the desk and that'll go directly to Laura who's um, controlling the switcher which if you want to talk about the switcher Let's get into that. Yeah, let's get in. And by the way, real quick, so uh, you talked about the Joe Cam. Uh, Joe's actually a good friend of mine, and that's how Andrew and I met. Um, yeah. I used to work with Joe when I had my corporate job. You guys know I left that about three years ago. So uh, still uh, still floating. Joe is still around. He's yeah. on the show. And Joe's still, yeah, he's actually on the show, which yeah. is cool. Cool, you guys are such good friends, yeah. man. And uh, that's how we met. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, it's an awesome connection. So thank you, Joe. I run my cameras through a switcher. We have five cameras. We run it through an Atom Mini Extreme ISO. The main thing that you want to make sure when you're using a camera um, for live streaming video or even just regular recording is you want to, want to make sure it has clean HDMI. What that means is, is when you're recording, the time and date stamp, all that stuff is removed from the screen. So do some research on that. Um, it's very easy to do on most of your up, uh, latest models. You want to make sure that you're, you're uh, buying a camera that is at least compatible with live streaming and these switchers. So the Atom uh, mini extreme ISO this one will allow you to switch up to eight cameras. They do have a model. That's the mini uh, Ada mini ISO. That's a four camera switcher, which is honestly it's a it's plenty uh, There's nothing wrong with that. I just outgrew it a little too fast because I was having You know five six people in my studio and then with Joe cam, you know, we were kind of having cam. different uh, Angles that we were trying to do you'll notice we have a ton of lighting in the studio being a photographer for 18 years, I kind of went nuts when I was a photographer with lighting. You know, you get key lights, main lights, backlighting, side lighting. Like, I go nuts with lighting. So in the studio, you can kind of see that I pass that along into the studio with my style. Um, I have my main lights up here for the guests that are sitting here. Um, we have the lighting over my desk, which is the main light for me. Um, we have a side light over here, which also you can see my guitars hanging in the background. Those are lit up during the show. And then we have backlighting kind of showing the sound foam, the soundproofing foam. So it kind of gives that background angle 
when people are sitting down, it kind of gives the, the feel of that ripple effect along the, the foam, which looks really cool. So I don't like to, to, to go short on the professional aspects of lighting. If you are doing video, I highly recommend a good set of LEDs or five, who knows? Yeah, and that's recording anything, guys. If you're doing, uh, if you're doing, a lot of you play guitar, well, all of you play guitar watching my channel. Um, hey, smash the like button real quick, by the way, guys. Do that real quick if, you, if this video is helping you. Uh, but a lot of you guys like to record yourself playing guitar and, and put yourself out there on social media. Maybe you have YouTube channel or whatever. So, yeah, lighting is, I think, lighting and, and the sound quality, those Absolutely. two things are, are obviously a must, you know. So, you've got an extremely pro lighting setup here, man, along with everything else, you know. Yeah, and you will learn a lot about lighting when you start playing with it. Um, they have different models, but you'll see, you know, some lighting is, is a soft light. Some light is more of a, a brighter key light, which is going to have a different reflection on the side of your face. Or maybe you have, a, a you know, hair that you want to kind of have stand out and you have a, a little side light, you know, on your hair, things like that. But all these um, models that I have, they have the, the ability to change the temperature of the lighting and the Kelvin temperatures. Most of your high end or even, you know, even some of your basic models have that ability. You know, some have the, the knobs that you turn, some are touch screen. So when you're doing your research, just look at that. I have some mounts on the wall. So I've mounted my lights directly to the wall, which gives me space because obviously I have a lot of tripods in here already. The mounting on the wall, obviously they're not gonna go anywhere, but you can still adjust these. If I wanna swing this light to the left or to the right, it still gives me that ability. The barn doors on these lights, you can adjust those um, to kind of not reflect or reflect different areas of the room or the person that you're lighting. Definitely pay attention to that when you're doing your video. Dude, cables, let's talk about that because I suck at cable management in my studio. The cables are just everywhere. Yeah. Uh, even when I play live, they're kind of, I could be a little bit neater. <laughs> yeah, um, and I have cables all over the place and, and uh, it kind of looks like a, a mess. And it is, but you, it's honestly just something you have to deal with. You know, I, I do tie them up here and there. Um, the problem is, when you're cleaning the studio, if you have to make an adjustment, um, if you have them tied down, I've seen some people literally nail them to the walls and have these, you know, permanently in place. And I just don't recommend that because if you want to change something up for whatever reasons, things come up when you're recording or you want to be creative and do something different. I just like the ability to, hey, if I want to use this camera over here tomorrow, or I want to move, you know, this camera over here, I, I want to have the flexibility of untying that cable and rerouting it under my desk or something like that. So you don't see this obviously when we're recording, but it is part of that process of having a studio, the cables. I mean, you have an HDMI cable or 10, you have camera cords or five, you have mic cords, the veins of your, of your existence. Without the cords, you do not exist. That's a good analogy, man. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a must have, uh, dude. I do want to talk about all the, like the, you know, the sound reinforcement here on the walls. Uh, you've got a lot in here. I mean, this is, this is pretty yeah. cool. And I want to tell you something that's important. And I wish I would have known this going into the soundproofing process. Pay attention to when you're setting up your studio. And to give you a little background on this studio, it was two bedrooms. And I knocked mm. down the wall, sledgehammered it. And we knocked down the wall, we put flooring in, made it one big room. So in doing so, trying to design the studio, you have a concrete wall over here. When you're messing with drywall versus concrete, you're gonna have different backings for this. You're gonna use two-way tape, okay? Double-sided tape for the concrete, which you're probably using four to five little sticky tapes plus super glue mm. to get these things to stick. I mean, they do not wanna stick on the wall. I had a nightmare getting this situated. I didn't do the best job in the world, but um, you know, you're trying to get them snug up next to each other. You come in the next day and you see eight of them have fallen, you know, so you have to restick them until they stick. I've used, you know, various methods. Now, when you're using the drywall, it's simple because you use the two inch push pins and you're literally just pushing them in the wall and the push pins will make them stick in a split second. I use one push pin per 12 by 12 inch foam pad. So doing that was simple. 
and I will get some more along the wall here later. The doors, again, that's double-sided tape. You don't want to be putting holes in your doors. You're going to have to open and close these doors sometimes. This door is typically permanently closed, but we do use it to bring equipment in and out. You want to make sure that they're fastened on there good enough to where you're opening and closing a door, they're not falling off. So it's tricky messing with this foam. You can spend hundreds of dollars just on foam. Man, that's all great info too, especially for really any kind of studio where you want that sound reinforcement. Because just, I mean, we're using the DJI mics here, uh, but just talking in this room with no mics, dude, it sounds great, you know. And I can tell you when this had zero soundproofing in it, the echo was horrible. <laughs> Horrible. I Organic did Organic reverb, right? Yeah, it was just horrible. <laughs> you know, I put flooring in here. I should have, you know, a lot of studios have carpet for that, yeah. you know, extra absorption. I went with a different wood. I put some carpet down. I probably could use some more carpet. But even with that being said, you know, the soundproof in that back wall, I mean, it helps a ton. Again, you could probably do more over here and you could spend another two or 300 bucks with soundproof foam on the wall over there. It's just... You know, you can spend, and if I open that closet up over there, there's yeah. a stack of squares, you know, five, four feet high that I haven't used yet. So, wow. yeah. Oh, and another thing, when you do buy your soundproof foam, do not put it up right away. Let it sit for 48 hours and expand because when you order that foam, it comes all sucked up, vacuum sucked, and you've got to cut that plastic open and let your foam sit for two days, not 24 hours, two days and let it blow up to the size that it's going to be when it's on your wall. That's Very important. Great tip, man. Thank you for that. <laughs> so headphones, obviously important. Um, I had somebody message me a few months back and they were doing an, a, a recording and, and they were actually using a Zoom meeting of, of some sort and they were getting a lot of audio echo um, within the recordings. And then I, I found out they were just using the audio direct out of their laptop uh, and they were getting a bad just echo because their microphones were picking up the audio out of the computer. And I said, look, everybody in that room needs a set of headphones and they need to wear them. Um, you need no audio coming out of your equipment here. And that's very important when you're recording and live streaming. Put some headphones on. That way you can hear exactly what you're going to sound like when you come out on the live stream. And this is a good recording tip in general, guys. When you're recording your guitars or vocals or whatever, let's say let's say you're recording vocals, you've got your mic set up, and let's say you're in your home studio, you don't have a vocal booth or whatever, you're just you know, using what you have, which I recommend that. Hey, use what you have and do what you can, uh, but you don't want to have the same scenario. You don't want to have the music coming out of your monitors while you're recording vocals because it's going to pick that up. You want to have the headphones, you know, hearing it through that and have your monitors completely off. So very good tip. Go check out our podcast, our show. I was actually on Drew's show uh, about a week or so ago, it right? It was an awesome time, yes. We had a great time. I know some <laughs> of you caught that, but I'll have a link. I'll put it up here too, guys, so you can check that out. And I'll put a link in the description of this video. Uh, hey, check that out and hey, leave some comments and subscribe to Drew's channel. It's a, it's a really cool, uh, really cool podcast style. And uh, you have a lot of just interesting people in there too, man. We have all types. It's everything from criminals, attorneys, musicians, mm. and you name it. So drinkingwithdrew.com. We also have all of our archive mm. videos on our website. Awesome. And hey, if you can guess what band this is, I'm going to give you something free. Hit me up. Yeah, we'll give them another video for free. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you for the support. And remember, keep it metal.